Godfather of the game. The Godfather of the game. This uses the same story as the movie, so I'm not going to be detailing the plot too much. Basically, the Corleones are in a power struggle with some of the other controlling families of New York starting in, I think, the 30s or 40s. And you are an up-and-coming soldier for the Corleones. The game is a ripoff of Grand Theft Auto, and it's nowhere near as good as Grand Theft Auto. I haven't played any Grand Theft Auto since Vice City, which is from 2001 or 2002. This game is from 2006. I can only really compare it to that, so that's what I'll do, and it's nowhere near as good as that. So, Really the only thing it has on Vice City is the setting and the time period. That is it. There's... yeah. It's pretty much a one-trick pony. Basically, the entire game is driving some shootouts, which I'll get into more, and extorting businesses, basically taking them over. The extortion, for as long as it actually works. Later on in the game, you barely extort at all. But, when it works, basically you walk up to the owner of a place, and you may have had to kill some guards from some of the other families to get to him, and, or her, and you say, you know, we want this place, so, and either the guy is, you know, goes along with it right away, or you have to smash some of his stuff, and or beaten or threaten him directly. You know, you can smash the cash register, for example. You can smash some of the stuff in his store, you know. Basically saying, you mean business. And you have to be careful not to push it too far. There is a bar in the top right, and it's, you know, the background is all black. There's a zone at the end that is red, and a zone that is green. You have to get it to or past the green zone but not up to the red zone. Because if you go to the red, yeah, they're not going to do business with you, basically. And, yeah, those are basically the things you're going to be doing. There are some car chases, but basically, you're not going to see a lot of trouble from... You have to do a ton of stuff before they even begin to care about you. Other than that, there are just a couple of missions where you engage in car chases. I will grant some of the missions are pretty cool, as are some of the contract hits that you can also do. I think, basically if you do... I don't know exactly what you have to do to complete the game, but some of the conditions, and you may have to you know, do them all, is to destroy the compounds of the four other families, to extort all businesses, take over them all, and do all the missions and all the contract hits. Though, it seems like there keep being contract hits. I've completed all the contract hits, and they keep offering some, so I don't know exactly. And you can keep playing after you have got those. At least, the one thing that I haven't done yet is collect all the collectibles. I don't know if you can keep playing the game after that. Anyway, you can keep playing after you've taken care of the other families, you know, store all this and such, but why would you? There is nothing, the game doesn't offer anything after that. There's no one left to extort. It's not like in Vice City, where you can go to this or that place and try out these cool cars, or you know, Vice City also offers flying. You go to a lot of very different places. Everything looks the same in this. I, I mean, I haven't been that much to New York, so I don't know if like their depiction of Central Park is realistic. But yes, they do have some landmarks. But that's it. Every everywhere looks the same. I kept getting lost because you can't 
other than using the map, and the minimap is pretty useless, you can't tell, you know, what am I headed towards. It's not like you can see in the distance this or that famous building, or okay, I'm driving away from this or that famous building, so I'm heading towards where I'm going, you know, unless you have... If you're going somewhere for a mission or a hit, which, you know, is far from all of the game, you know, the businesses to extort, the safe houses, you don't get, like, it would be great if there was, like, an arrow on the little mini-map thing that said, you know, nearest safe house in this direction, nearest business to extort. Why didn't they do this? You know, it, it just makes so much sense. The, if I do say so myself, the map is pretty bad because sometimes the safe house will be where there's also a business to extort and the two things will overlap awkwardly so that you can't see if there is a safe house there also. And the safe houses, like in Grand Theft Auto games, that's where you save, you know, it's also the best place to restock ammo. The game is just so lazily put together, it's the least amount of effort they could possibly do, and maybe this has to do with it being EA making it, because this is not the first game that I've seen EA phone in. There is almost no Yeah, let's continue down that path. The faces of the other characters, other than the ones that you extort, which you never see more than the one time, because why would you? There's nothing more that they can do for you. The faces are almost all the exact same. There are maybe two or three different types of goons, and this goes for all five families. Basically, the only way you can tell them apart is the color suit they're wearing. And no, it's not a bad look. None of the five looks are outright bad. But seriously, put in just a little more effort there. We're not going to remember that there's a black guy, a white girl with red hair, a black woman, all these various people running the stores, because we're only going to see them once. There's no reason to talk to them more than the one time. They're not going to offer you anything. Also, you can talk to everyone, including members of the other families, you know, soldiers for the other families, except for when they're shooting at you. Why? What does this do? There's, there's no point to this. Also, the standard animation for anyone threatening anyone else is basically this. That means that every time you go to a place you can extort near the end of the game where they don't seem to attack you, the soldiers from the other families that are there, one family per, you know, per business to extort because one family is running them, one, you know, any time, that's how they're standing around and they're like talking about, oh, this guy's real dirty, this guy, you know, we want to beat you up. And that's also how you stand sometimes when, you know, in pre-scripted cinematic events and stuff like that, and it's how otherwise dignified people from this series are standing around. You know, I get that you have to have some sort of stance, they have to be standing in some way, and a lot of game developers seem to think that it's better that they're moving instead of standing more or less still. But using that same exact pose for all of these, I mean, icon well, iconic, well, really memorable characters from the first movie are seen standing like that. And yes, they do get most of the voice talent. I believe the one that they did not get was Al Pacino, Mr. hoo And the guy they got was okay. They also... They're a bit hit and miss on the accent. You know, one one of the voices that you sometimes hear from people you're extorting is like this. And I guess I get it. I just don't get why it's not a mafia member that is talking like that. Because that's that's where I want to hear that kind of voice from. You know, it's it's a cool voice. It says, you know, I'm wise beyond your years. 
and I'm gonna tell you some of my secrets. But instead, it's just people you extort, you know. Yeah. So, the driving. I already sort of alluded to, there are not a lot of cars in this game. There's maybe half a dozen. I'm, I'm not kidding, half a dozen. The only difference, you know, differences to them are the colors other than that. Also, several of these cars are not cool to drive around in, you know. I don't know just how many really cool cars are in Vice City, but there's enough that I could have like a top five. I haven't played it recently, but I can still remember some of these really cool cars. And I'm not even a car guy. But in this, basically, there's one car that's really fast. You can also drive a cop car, by the way, and it's nowhere near as fast. I thought that was kind of a Grand Theft Auto thing. That the cop car is like one of the fastest, maybe the fastest. Anyway, other than the really fast car, not the cop car, there are maybe two cars that drive mm, somewhat, not fast, but just not completely slow either. And at least one of these has several windows, so unless, so anytime you're driving and there's a guy in there with you, you know, sticking the Tom gun out the window, shooting at other people, you know, he is, th that's the kind of car you're driving in, and that happens for some of, the mission, some of the missions, and yes, sometimes it is cool. It is a little annoying that they didn't go for the end of the Matrix kind of thing, where there's a bar of how long he can stay out, and you have to hold a key down, then he'll be shooting, and then he has to recharge, you know, and you'll want to not be shooting all the time, because then there might be a situation where you really need him, and you've spent all that bar. That was cool, you know, and that's really not something you can say about Enter the Matrix all that much. Anyone who's played it will tell you it's a pretty crap game with very few good things to it. And I'm not even hating on it, you know, I actually kind of like the game. Probably because I'm just in love with the Matrix, and yes, still. The sequels never happened, shut up. Anyway, then there are a couple of really slow cars, and that's it. Oh yeah, and there are taxis. That's really it. There's, there are so few cars. And the fast ones seem to, at least to me, they seem to sort of disappear near the end of the game. They really weren't there a lot. At the very start of the game, you get to change your look to exactly how you want this guy, what you want the guy to look like for the rest of the game. And that is kind of cool, even though they really don't give you that many things. To, I mean, they give you a lot of things to play around with, but, excuse me, you cannot change all that much. Excuse me. There are basic... You know, I mean, for example, I recently created my own character in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. And there are far more options there, you know. Yes, they also have a wider variety because they're not limited to, limited to Earth, but still. You really can't change all that much in this game. So, the... I guess that pretty much gets us to the shooting aspect. This is painful. This is just true pain. Okay, let me start by saying I think what they were going for was a kind of western dueling kind of thing. The problem is one of the many problems is that you're fighting more than one person. Almost exclusively you're fighting more than one person. Even when you're out for a hit, there's usually guards around. Basically, for your shots to do a lot of damage, you and you know, to make it easier to hit someone because they're often you know, running around you use this target lock kind of feature. And the target lock is just broken oh, half of the time. Basically, it won't necessarily go for the one nearest to you. You can't switch targets without disengaging it and re-engaging it, and 
you know, it's not like those will actually, it's not like it will necessarily actually go to a new target. Sometimes it will go to a target that is a civilian, someone not armed, someone you really have no reason to kill, while there are, you know, maybe five good targets right in the vicinity. Why? The only possible reason I can come up with is that it was phoned in. And please don't start telling me, you know, oh, they didn't know how to do it, then they shouldn't have been making the game. That simple. It's also, for some reason, you know, you, you can move it to, you know, if you want to shoot them in the knee or something. I don't personally get it, because why do you want to shoot anywhere other than their head? That's the best way to kill them. I, I don't care if I can shoot someone in the knee or in the jaw or whatever. I just want to get rid of them as fast as I can, because they can kill me in a matter of seconds. They're outnumbering me by quite a factor, and they aim much faster than I do. So why would I want to spend a lot of effort trying to shoot them somewhere else? Sometimes you can be focusing on the head and shooting a ac an accurate weapon, and it won't actually hit. You can empty an entire clip and it won't hit their head. And there may be, you know, maybe you shot them so that they're down or you caused an explosion near them. They're down on the ground trying to get up and you're not hitting them and they get up and then they start shooting at you. The... The target lock might actually lock onto someone who is far away and hidden behind something, while there are perfectly good targets right in front of you. The target lock is the only way to shoot around corners, and you have to do this a lot, because... I mean, everyone who's played one of these tactical shooters knows that you don't want to be moving all the way across, you know, around a corner before you shoot at someone who is further down around the corner, especially if they're also, you know, hiding, but in this you really, really need to, because they can kill you with very, very few shots. Basically, if you let yourself be shot at, you are likely to die, just like that, you know, almost immediately, even if it's only one guy, even though when you shoot at them, you can empty an entire clip and not, you know, kill them enough. Also, with the target lock, you can actually shoot above their head. Why? Why? What good does that possibly do? Seriously. Why would you shoot above someone's head when they're shooting at you? Man, this game is just... crap in so many ways. So anyway, you have to use the target lock to shoot around a corner, and if it's not working the way it should, then you're just screwed. Pretty much. There's almost no situation in this game where you don't need at least a little luck. And some will say that this is a good thing, but really, you can win just by chance. It, I, I can't put into words the frustration of ten failed attempts where you try really hard, and then one time it just works. Just because you got lucky. Just because the target lock happened to decide to work properly that time. And you know, you complete intendments which you've just spent hours failing at. And the guns. There aren't very many, and they're basically useless. The shotgun only has two bullets before you have to reload. And unless you shoot them in the head, you're probably not going to kill them with only two bullets. And this game also really sucks in that kind of... You know how some bad games sometimes, even though you're actually aiming at the guy and it looks like you can be hitting him, your guy actually shoots into a box that is in front of you that you were hoping would provide some cover for you, but no, instead it just blocks your shot and you're stuck there with an empty gun and they're shooting at you. Then you have the Tommy gun that everybody knows and loves. It pretty well sucks, other than at really short range. You can actually spend an entire clip at medium range and still not kill the guy. 
and this is one guy we're talking about. There are ten other guys in the area, and you're spending your clip on one guy and not killing him. Maybe not even particularly slowing him down, because unless you shoot them to the ground or cause an explosion near them, they're not going to be slowed down no matter how little health they have. There is a pistol, I think it's like a 45. That's one of the better guns. Then there is a revolver, like a little uh, 38 stub note. You know that if you know guns. Also a good gun. And then there is a Magnum revolver. Also a good gun. Those three. Aim for the head, use those three. That's it. You know, that's pretty much the only... They could dump the other two guns, pretty much. Then there are Molotov cocktails and dynamite. And the throwing system is crap. So if you're trying to throw from cover, it'll most likely bounce back, you'll have to run away from cover, you'll probably be killed even if you do make it away from the explosion in time. And with how often you're killing these people and you have to use surgical strikes because they're near the person you want to extort, and if you kill him, you'll have to fight your way through these guys again. So it doesn't really make sense to give you these weapons that can do a lot of damage. You also have bombs. I have no idea what these are supposed to be for, I guess, for when you know, you're blowing up the compounds, but you could just use dynamite for those, and it's not like dynamite is that hard to come by. You can recharge at any safe house. There's not really much of an excuse for running out of ammo in this game other than the really lousy target lock. Other than that, you don't lose your ammo when you die. You don't lose your ammo when you're arrested, which hardly ever happens anyway. You can actually, sometimes, I think with the compounds, you can tear through some of, because those are pretty well guarded, you can tear through some of the, you know, guards, then drive back to a safe house, get full health, get, you know, full ammo for all your guns. I mean, I'd say half the safe houses, you can get full ammo again by just going in there once. You know, even if you have no ammo for a gun, just go in there once, that's it. And other than that, you know, other than the compounds, the warehouses, and the transport hubs, you don't need that, mu that much ammo, you know. The regular businesses to extort, they never have that many guards, you know. As soon as you can sort of use the target lock okay, then, then you really don't need to be recharging ammo all that often. You, know, you can just go to a safe house anytime after you, you know, there's way too little consequence in this game. Get killed, nothing happens. Get arrested, nothing happens. It doesn't cost you money, you don't lose any ammo, you don't even lose the respect, you know. I think that's about what there is to say about the shooting. So, the respect, it's basically like experience points. You upgrade your abilities by getting, earning respect, and you do this by extorting, you do this by blowing open save, safes, and, you know, in general, just doing stuff that in general gets you further in the game, you also earn respect through, and, yeah, that, you know, and you can then upgrade your skills, and that's pretty much it, you know, play, once you play through most of the game, if you actually do all the things, you know, get it up to 100% on all of them, it basically doesn't matter what abilities you chose at what time, because you pretty much have upgraded all of them. And again, there's nothing to do once you've extorted all the businesses. What I thought when I first heard about this was that it was almost like a real-time strategy kind of thing, you know, where you had to keep them at bay, you had to make sure that they didn't take over the businesses that you had taken over from them. But no! No! The moment you take over a business, it's just yours! And that's it! You never have to worry about taking over that business again. The one thing is, if you don't quite get to taking over the business, if you die before you get to extort, or before you finish extorting, or if you kill the guy, or just get him into the red, whether or not you kill him, you're going to have to do it all over again. You're going to have to kill all the guards you killed to get there, and you might not be able to do so right away. I think you have to wait until another payday. I didn't really look at how much time passes in the game for time real life time to pass, but anyway, it's, you know, and there is, you know, night and day also, but 
it's it's only okay. The graphics, they're okay. But for some reason, the eyes get really crazy and they open their eyes wide or move their eyebrows really ecstatically, way too much. You know, they do do okay on some of the animations that reenact scenes from the movie. And yes, you do get to be an important part of key scenes from the movie that everybody remembers. By the way, the stealth sucks. You barely ever use it. The gura garot wire, you hardly ever use. I used it three times, maybe. And I pretty much only used them when it was like you got bonus points during a hit if you used it, or when a mission said I had to use it. You know. Okay, think about it, maybe more than three times. But anyway, it sucks. It it's useless outside of the missions and the hits where it's called for, because other than that, they know you're coming. You can't sneak up on anyone, basically, and there's usually more than one standing in the vicinity anyway, so why would you be standing there fighting only one? And that brings me nicely into the beating system that you use during the extortion, and you can also use it on guards. You can, you can beat up anyone, basically, I think. I haven't tried to beat up any of the fellow Corleones, maybe you can. Anyway, basically you either grab them and, you know, punch them, or you can grab them with both hands and then, you know, like, knee them in the chest, give them, you know, headbutt them, stuff like that. And you can also, you know, you can hold them over a ledge and throw them over a ledge, throw them into an oven, and, you know, slam them into stuff, things like that. In theory, it sounds great, but it's so lazily done. There are way too many functions in this game, and way too many. it's spread over way too many keys, where it really, really doesn't need to be at all. You know, as a quick example, why have two different keys for plant a bomb and take cover at a wall? You're not going to accidentally do one when you're trying to do the other. There's only a couple of places you can plant bombs, basically at the safes and in the basements of the compounds. That's it. You're not going to accidentally do one, and, you know, neither are that close to walls. So, yeah. You know, there are way too many keys to have to remember and to have to get to when you're already constantly in danger in the situations where you're going to be needing them. Anyway, the beating system, yeah, it's just... There are too many things to remember, and most people aren't going to bother learning them. Basically, you move the mouse back and forth in different ways, and just... It's shoddy. And also, almost everyone you're up against has weapons. Sometimes you're going to be fired upon when you're beating up one guy. There might be three others who are standing around shooting at you with great aim. Yeah, other times, they decide that they want to run right up to you and... They might start beating you up while you're beating up this one guy, and the beating up gets more and more difficult, even though it, the extortion gets more and more easy. Anyway, yeah, and also, when you're beating one guy up, I guess this makes sense. You can hurt the surroundings, and you can hurt the people near. It makes enough sense, but it's really annoying, because you might accidentally kill the guy you're trying to extort by beating up a guard near him, and, yeah, or you might push him over the edge into the red zone. Also, the extortion, sometimes, literally right after, literally, you walk in, you say, I'm gonna extort you, and he says, no way, and then he backs away as soon as it goes out of that pre-scripted cinematic event, and he says, okay, I'll do whatever you want. Why? I guess because I killed guards around him, but then why did he say no to begin with? It's broken. It's phoned in. Also, other times he'll literally say, okay, I'll do it, and then he'll start beating you up. You know, he, most of the people you extort suck at it, but still, it's weird, and it's a flaw in the game. You can't do drive-bys yourself, basically. If you want shooting to happen out of car, it's just in those missions that, you know, have that. And yes, some of the chases are quite fun, but it is not worth getting this game just for that. I was fortunate enough, a friend of mine got this game and he said he didn't really want it, so he gave it to me for free, so, you know. 
I did have some fun with it, but I'd much rather just play Vice City. So, yeah. Your character, of course, also has basically no personality. Basically, the story is your father was killed by one of the other Dons, and the rest of the thing is, oh, revenge story, you know. And your guy sort of falls for this girl that you hardly see any of, and yeah. And you do get to spend some more time with some of the minor characters from The Godfather, you know, the first movie, and some of that is cool enough. They get some of the slang right, and that might be more or less what there is to say about it. The driving is okay, sometimes it responds kind of shoddily, and in general, the driving is not a better experience than actually good car games. You know, it's a licensed game. Licensed games suck. And I think that is what there is to say about it, so that was my spoiler free review of The Godfather, the game, the suckage. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.